We're now live, Chair. OK, thank you. Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's keeping well. And um, welcome to today's meeting of the Planning Applications Committee. Um, can I also welcome Tony Bur Burrows and Joanna Archer, who are uh, from the County Highways. They'll be here to answer any questions that members may have on the application. Um, so just a little bit of feedback there. Uh, can I just say to everyone that, well, we all know, but for anybody watching in, this is a virtual uh, meeting of the Planning Applications Committee. Um, members all know by now, but just a little reminder to mute your microphones uh, when you're not actually speaking and also to use the hand icon uh, to indicate when you want to, to speak. OK, so that was item number one. Item number two is to receive apologies. I've had uh, apologies from Councillor Phillips. OK, uh, Victoria, has there been any... Um, there have been no other apologies, Chair. Yeah, and no substitutions, no? No substitutions. OK, thank you. Item number three is to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 2nd of February. Uh, is everybody happy with those minutes? OK, I see no dissent, so thank you for that. Item number four is to receive any declarations of disclosable pecuniary and other interests in accordance with the Members' Code of Conduct. Um, that's if it's not already printed on the agenda or you may become aware of something uh, whilst we're going through our agenda items so let us know then okay so we have none of those which takes us on to item number five which are uh, declarations of contact where any member has been uh, contacted by anybody in relation to any of the applications in front of us council Watkins. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just to say that I have had some sort of involvement with uh, the item number two on the application, being as I'm portfolio holder for housing and communities. So okay. I, d I don't know if I have to not vote or what, but I have been slightly involved in that. Um, well, that would be a decision for yourself, Councillor Watkins, if you need to. Declare. I've gone past the declarations of interest, but it's okay. just, just about contact, yeah? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Which then takes us on to item number, item number six, applications uh, for planning permission where the public have indicated a desire to speak. Um, if I just run through the process there for anybody that's here that's uh, going to be taking part and, and speaking. The, um, the officer will present their report and when I take people to speak um, you'll be allowed three minutes. Um, I'll try to be strict on that. I'm saying try because I, I can't always hear the, uh, the uh, egg timer when it goes off. Um, Following on from that, members may seek any points of clarification. That is only to clarify anything that you may have said during your your three minutes. Um, following on from that, uh, once something's been moved and seconded, uh, members of the committee will debate the item and uh, hopefully reach a, a, a decision tonight. OK, so um, going straight on to the applications then. The first one is land off Ashley Lane Bedworth. Uh, Darren? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'll just share oh. I'll just share my screen. Ooh. I'm assuming everyone can see that. 
Yes, well, I can. Okay, brilliant. And you can hear me, presumably. Yes. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Chair. Okay, this application is a full application for residential development of 169 dwellings, including public open space, associated earthworks, surface water drainage, landscaping, car parking, and other ancillary works. The site is 11.7 hectares in size and lies on the western edge of Bedworth Heath. In the period from the 1900s through to the 80s, it formed part of the Newgate Colliery with associated infrastructure that included colliery buildings and a mineral railway line which ran across the northern part of the site into central Bedworth. Um, beyond this railway line was the former spoil heap. To the east of the site is the residential area of Bedworth Heath with the roads of Jasmine Way and Forsythia Close adjoining the site. The key issues to assess are the principle of development, the impact on landscape character, the impact on residential and visual amenity, open space, ecology, contamination, noise and air quality, flooding, archaeology, highway safety, and any planning obligations. In regard to the principle of development, as previously stated, the application is a full planning permission. The site has current extant outline planning permission for 169 dwellings. Rather than pursue this outline though, the, um, through the submission of sub reserve matters, the applicant has submitted a full application since they intend to change the access points from those previously approved. So this is a whole new application, although there is an extant outline in place. The principle of development is considered to be established through that extant outline and it's considered acceptable here. Additionally, the housing numbers of these 169 dwellings have effectively already been counted towards the housing provision for the borough. In regard to the impact on landscape character, the site is within the area referred to by the background papers to the borough plan as Bedworth Woodlands Rural Fringe, where the strength of landscape character is moderate, the landscape condition is moderate, and the landscape strategy is to enhance. Both this background paper and the previous outline application backed up the landscape and visual impact assessment submitted now, which states that the landscape area can be enhanced. There are a wide variety of improvements to the landscaping area and open space elements, um, which are welcomed on site, and I'll go into more detail on those shortly. In, in regard to the impact on residential immunity, Firstly, when assessing the newly proposed dwellings, there are a few small shortfalls, but these are all a matter of centimetres, and in each case, there is considered to be mitigation. Officers therefore consider the impact not to be significant on any future occupiers. In regard to the existing dwellings surrounding the site, all distance standards are met, and it's considered therefore that there'll be no unac unacceptable harm to the residential immunity of existing occupiers. In regard to visual immunity, the design style of the new properties is largely modern, but with traditional elements and features. From outside of the site, many of the new properties will be built so as to face on, a, on southwards onto Asti Lane. There are mainly, these are mainly detached and semi-detached house types. As the house types are sited along Asti Lane, to the west, they curve northward. To the north of the site, the dwellings are orientated so as to face onto the open space and wildlife corridor. Dual aspect dwellings are used occasionally throughout the site to give a better relation to the roads and private drives which surround them. The materials are to be a mixture of different types of brick, mainly red in colour, with some render and concrete tiles with a thin leading edge. Overall, considered that the design and visual immunity impact is acceptable. And the Neaton and Bedworth Parks team have no objection to the scheme in terms of open space, landscaping and ecology. The proposal will make significant open space and ecological improvements. These improvements include, amongst several other features, an invertebrate bank, uh, a high vernacular creation, improved grassland, meadow grassland and tussock grassland, management of existing woodland and additional planting, pond enhancement and creation and formal play areas and equipment. Additionally, at the request of MBBC Parks, the applicant has agreed to include a cycle link provision within the Section 106 agreement for this planning application to allow a cycle connection from the site to Smaller Lane Local Centre and then beyond. Um, 
on existing infrastructure. This will be added to any legal agreement. In regard to contaminated land, given the heritage of the site, it is unclear exactly what contamination remains on site, if any. Therefore, the, environment, the Council's environmental health team have asked for conditions to be added to any approval to ensure that this is acceptable. This is considered uh, appropriate and will be added to any approval as uh, detailed on the agenda. With respect of air quality and noise, the location of the site is beneficial to future occupiers in that existing noise levels and air quality is good in the immediate area. Environmental health were consulted and stated that no noise conditions were necessary, but that some of the conditions were necessary, including dust management, electric vehicle charging points and gas fired boiler conditions. And these are shown on the agenda. In regard to flooding, and potential flood risk. The majority of the site is in flood zone one, which is at lowest risk of flooding. There are some of the northwest parts of the site are within flood zones two and three, but these are not intended to harbour any residential development and instead form mostly open space or um, landscaping creation. Um, Warwickshire County Council flood risk have no objections to the scheme subject to some conditions. The Environment Agency also have no objection to the scheme subject to conditions. It is therefore considered that the proposal will have no unacceptable impact on flood risk. Warwickshire County Council's archaeology team have requested a condition to ensure that a written scheme of investigation is submitted prior to work beginning. This is considered acceptable. It is therefore considered that the proposal will have no unacceptable impact on archaeology. In regard to highway safety, Warwickshire County Council Highways Authority have responded with no objection, subject to conditions which are considered to be acceptable. Access is proposed to be via two main accesses, one to serve 13 dwellings, which is to the east of the uh, site, um, and the other to serve the rest of the site, <clears throat> the remaining 156 dwellings. Warwickshire County Council have seen a road safety audit and are content with that, that document. It is therefore considered that there will be no unacceptable harm caused by way of highway safety. In regard to planning obligations, various requests have been made for contributions and these have been accepted by the applicant. They include a total of over two million pounds worth of contributions and include contributions towards George Elliott Hospital Trust, the Police Place Partnership, MBBC Sports Development, the NHS, Warwickshire Infrastructure, Education, MBBC, MBBC Parks and Highways. Additionally, the legal agreement will contain a clause to provide the off-site cycleway, as previously mentioned. The recommendation is therefore one of approval, subject to conditions and a legal agreement, as detailed on the agenda. Thanks, Chair. OK, thank you, Darren. Um, our first speaker is Councillor Evans. Uh, yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can, yeah. Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Yes, um, I'd like to um, object to this application um, as, as the Ward Councillor, and I will be very, very brief in my reasoning why I believe it should be refused. Um, we have an adopted borough plan in place, which is adopted council policy, um, and the site in question does not fall uh, as a site within the borough plan. It's not a strategic or non-strategic site. Um, the, the borough plan was adopted and that gives us a five-year housing land supply um, and uh, I'd like to make reference to an application that the committee um, considered um, many months ago which was the application at the North Warwick and Hinckley College site that was refused on the grounds that it did not sit as part of the, the adopted borough plan and that a five-year housing line, land supply could be met without the site. So I, I would like to ask the committee that it um, refuses this application on the grounds that it does not fall as part of the borough plan and that a housing, a five-year housing land supply can be met um, without this uh, application being um, approved. Um, and yeah, basically that's what, I, that's what I've got to say really, Chair. I said I would be brief, but um, I was told um, during the borough plan process that we needed to adopt this, we needed to get it through in order to protect um, certain areas of, of green areas in, in Bedworth. Well, what 
the case here is that an applicant has come forward, put forward a site which isn't in the borough plan, and it, it seems that planning are recommending that it gets approved. So, uh, like I say, I make reference to the North Warwickshire and Hinkley College application, and I would ask that members refuse it on the same grounds. Thank you. OK, thank you. Do members have any points of clarification? Councillor Lloyd. Thank you, Chair. Can I just... Sorry. Was going to, can I just clarify, did Councillor Evans say he was a ward councillor? He's listed as, a, as the ward councillor. Okay. So I thought it was Bedworth Heath. Um, I've got to say, I I thought that for the area, but it's it's listed as Slough on the application. Um, Maybe we could clarify. Maybe somebody can clarify that in a minute. Oh, but actually, it's a point of clarification. Sorry, Councillor Lloyd, I should have said the point of clarification to the speaker. So if Councillor Evans wants to clarify that, please. There, so, yeah, there we go. Um, yes, I'm happy to clarify that um, the site, although it, it one would think that it falls in Bedworth Heath and it probably should. Um, it does fall into the Bedworth Slough Ward. Okay. Thank you. OK, thank you. Was there anything else, Councillor Lloyd? I'm not hearing anything. Are there any other points of clarification to the speaker? I, I think... Uh, Darren's got his hand up, Chair. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. Yeah, thank you. Or I could. <laughs> right. Um, Darren, I'm going to bring you in when we when the debate comes, unless it's something you want. No, to... no, that, that's fine. It was just something that, that Councillor Evans raised, but I'll um, I'll come back on it in a minute. Okay, thank you, um, Mr. Lanigan. Is Mr. Lanigan with us, Victoria? Do we know? One second, I'm just checking. I can't see his name. No, I don't think he's joined us yet. Okay, uh, and could somebody tell me was there? Uh, any statement to be read out if he wasn't here? As Darren? far as I'm aware, no, Chair. I'm just okay. checking now. Chair, I've been passed a statement from a Mr O'Hanlon. Yeah, we've got yeah, we we've got to get to him yet, yeah, Wendy. Okay. Well, I'll try Mr. Lanigan again after I've taken other people. Okay. Uh, Mr Slevin. Do we have Mr. Slevin with us? I don't think I've seen his name either. Can you confirm, Victoria, that Mr. Slevin isn't with us? Uh, just checking, Chair. Uh, Councillor Lloyd, can you just take your hand down so I don't get more confused than I already am? It doesn't appear he's with us, Chair. I'm just going to check the team's invite and see whether he accepted or not. One second.
Okay, I'll, I'm going to come back to it though. Um, which takes us on to Chris O'Hanlon from Balway. And I understand it's a written statement that Wendy's going to read out to us. Wendy? Yes, sir. Members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening regarding this application for the development of 169 new homes at Astley Lane Bedworth. Some members may be familiar with the site, with this planning committee having granted outline planning permission for up to 180 homes in December 2017. Unfortunately, that permission was unable to be delivered due to the approved access point being located over a high pressure gas main, hence the need for the new application which sits before you for determination today. This application is made in full and proposes the delivery of 169 dwellings, of which 25%, 42 dwellings, will be affordable in accordance with the Council's policy. The development follows the principles of the Outline Planning Permission, with the housing contained in the eastern half of the site and the western half comprised of extensive areas of new public open space, including a play area and a footpath cycle link to the wider area. Bellway Homes have worked with the Council and its consultees throughout the course of the application to ensure that all technical matters are addressed and that there are no objections from any statutory consultees. The application has received a relatively small number of objections from the local community. However, many of these objections relate to the principle of development, which has already been approved by the Extant Outline Planning Permission. In summary, the scheme fully complies with the relevant adopted and emerging policies of the development plan referred to in detail by the officer within his report. The Section 106 will secure over £2 million pounds towards biodiversity mitigation, children's play equipment, enhancement of sports and recreation facilities in Bedworth, education, highways, cycling infrastructure improvements, and a contribution towards health provision at George Eliot Hospital. This is in addition to the 25% on-site affordable homes and other public transport infrastructure upgrades captured through a Section 278 agreement. In summary, the principle of residential development on the site is established. The site will deliver 169 new homes, of which 42 will be affordable. The proposals are in full accord with the adopted development plan. There are no technical or environmental reasons to withhold the granting of consent. The site is located within a highly sustainable location and the scheme will deliver significant economic, social and environmental benefits. It is therefore respectfully requested that the committee resolve to grant the planning permission. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Wendy. Uh, can I just go back? I just want to double check um, whether Mr. Lanigan or Mr. Slevin is with us. I don't see them listed. The, as far as I can see, I can't find them, Chair, so I'm not okay. sure if they haven't joined or if they didn't receive the invitation. They should okay. have done that. Sorry, Chair. Okay, thank you. In which case, can I, uh, to enable debate to take place, move the recommendation which is printed, which is to grant planning permission subject to a legal agreement and the conditions printed. Is that seconded? Seconded, Chair. Councillor uh, Sandy. Okay, thank you. And thank, thank you, Councillor Watkins, as well. Okay, just before I bring members in, I, um, I know Darren wanted to uh, to clarify something, and I'm just uh, I'm going to ask if the county officers have got anything to say at this stage, or whether they want to respond to members' points. But Darren, if you if you can say what you wanted to say, but yeah, it, it may be that uh, thanks, Chair. I wanted to ask myself anyway, it might be what you were going to cover. The comments it might about well, LB, you might about well whether the, it's uh, local plan compliant and not part of the plan. Yeah, so a couple of issues, a couple of issues that Councillor uh, Evans picked up on is that you said that we have a plan to provide five years housing land supply. 
because this has already got permission that those numbers have already been counted as part of that five year supply. Um, so it, this does provide already for our five year supply. So it's been counted essentially. Um, secondly, you referenced the North Warwickshire and Hinkley College site, but we actually lost that appeal um, back in November. So although it was refused by the council, the inspectorate did allow that. But that's, that's all I've got to raise, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you. So I've got, I'm going to open it up to members now. Any member? Councillor Tromans. Uh, thank you, Chair. I've, I've got a couple of um, questions or observations for the highways officers and then a couple for our, our planning ones. Um, first of all, as far as highways go, I mean, it, it, it troubles me with the, the cars that are parked there at the end. So, you know, do the highway officers think that the cars that are parked opposite the proposed entrance uh, will, will, will pose a danger uh, in the future? Because I, I clearly think they would. Uh, and does the highways officer think that the uh, developers road safety audit on that basis is, is, is worth consideration, given that those cars are parked there pretty much every day? Um, and yeah, I, I know that you know you can say, oh well, cars shouldn't be parked opposite junctions or whatever. But um, certainly in my ward and in a lot of others, uh, they habitually are. Uh, and as they have currently been doing it in this location and have for years, I can't see that changing. And, and that that is something that needs to be taken into account. Uh, what the situation is on the ground. Uh, and then, if I just finish my questions, and then you know, uh, to, to save your time, chair. Um, in terms of our own planning officers, um, you know, the, the recommendations are finely balanced one, um, but I've got to ask, you know, how does it sit with, with them and, and indeed the, the members of the uh, the planning committee? Um, uh, I in fact forget that that's. Um, that's not relevant to the to, to this bit. I've uh, I've made notes on uh, I've, I've made all my notes on one uh, one item. Uh, that's all I've got to say, Chair. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Can I ask you what photos you were referring to, just for members' benefit, please? Um, it wasn't photos. I was I was looking at. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Um, I'll get the officers to respond. I think after the speakers. Councillor Lloyd. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I've got one question. It's a brownfield site. Um, we all know that, and you've already said that the um, um, the principle of development in the area has already been agreed and accounted uh, for the five-year plan. Um, I'm not well, I'm not sure whether there is any cars parked opposite. The councillor might have got confused with another application um, because it's all green um, lander opposite there and one access point. Um, but my big concern is, and it is my only concern really, you're putting a house in a state there and there's two mine shafts. Um, now, oh, I don't know what they were filled in with, how they were filled in. Um, but there's no reference within here uh, about those two mine shafts. I don't know whether there's houses uh, built on those two shafts or in the vicinity of those two shafts, or whether it's green um, open space within the vicinity of those two shafts. Uh, it doesn't say uh, how close you can build to the shafts or whether you can build over the shafts. Um, so I'd like some clarification before um, I vote on the uh, two mine shafts, please. OK, thank you, Councillor Lloyd. I, um, I'm, I'm going to get the officers to come back in after I've taken the next two speakers, I think. But I do know that the coal authority didn't make any objections. Uh, Councillor Smith. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just a quick question for Darren. I'm struggling on the map to see where the affordable housing is. Now, there's quite a quantity of affordable housing on there. I'd like to see how it's pepper potted. I wonder if Darren can pull a, a map up and, and just show us where it is. 
It's mentioned on the addendum, Councillor Smith. Yeah, I've got the addendum. I, I can't actually see where it is on there, though. Okay, all right. Do you want me to bring that up now, Chair? Uh, no, just, uh, just hang on to it. I've got one yeah. more speaker and then I'll, I'll bring you in. Councillor yeah, Wilson. Yeah, no worries. Councillor Wilson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, it's on a similar vein to um, Councillor Smith about the affordable housing, but I've actually tried to look online as we've been discussing this on the planning portal. It isn't the easiest thing to try and, and navigate, as I'm sure other members have found. But it seems to me that the, the, by two thirds of them seem to be clumped along the existing boundary, sorry, along the boundary with the existing development, and then the other third seems to be clumped, if I remember rightly, on the north western side of the application. Now, to me, that doesn't seem like pepper potting chair. It seems like we are putting the vast majority of the affordable housing, whether it be rented or, or shared ownership, against the line with most of the existing um, developments, which I think is grossly unfair, um, both on the um, existing residents, but also on the new residents, because we shouldn't be I've said this time and time again in, in previous meetings, we shouldn't be hiving them off into particular sections of the development and, and risk ghettoisation of um, our residents. They should be pepper potted a lot more, in my view, um, and it isn't fair or, or sustainable. There are other areas in the development which will have far nicer outlooks on um, from the, the housing than, than where they are currently proposed to be. Um, so, as it stands, I don't think it is sufficiently pepper potted. Um, I think they need to go away and look at where they have pepper potted them and uh, bring it back again, Chair, because I'm not happy to vote for it where they have currently placed the proposed social and affordable housing. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. I, I mean, I do understand what you're saying and I think officers under, uh, understand the views of this committee. But again, I also know what our housing people have said. And I do have some concerns about the termino terminology of ghettoisation. It seems to suggest something that maybe perhaps wasn't meant. Um, Darren, right, uh, if you've got them, there was the, uh, well, what, what the first one was maybe that the county about parking, I don't know whether you can answer it. Uh, one was about the mine shafts. And there was two about affordable housing and pepper locations. Yeah, okay, doke chair. Um, I'm not sure about the cars on the road. It's it's sort of a country lane. I don't recall seeing many. I don't know if that's if the councillor was referring to a different item on tonight. So that that's possible. Um, yeah, and. Um, in terms of the, the, the coal mining, um, they, they have prepared a coal mining risk assessment that's been scrutinised by the Coal Authority. And the Coal Authority, <coughs> excuse me, have made no objection, so they're content with it. Um, I'm not going to pretend to be any sort of mining engineer or anything like that, so I don't know the details of that report, but that's why we consult with those expert bodies and they're content, so um, that's enough in terms of my planning assessment. Um, so that's the coal mining issue. I'll just share my screen and show show the members the um, site plan. Just thank you. Um, no problem. Bear with me a second. Uh, that hopefully is well. So I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer. Is there any way of zooming in or? What I'll do. Uh, well, it's quite such a big plan. I have to scroll around it. What I'll do is. Um, I'll draw a box. I'll draw a box around um, the affordable housing. So there's some here. No, oh, that's not a very good box. Apologies. Let's have a look. Hopefully that's a bit more visible. Sorry about this chair, bear, bear with me.
Okay, so we've got four main areas, as you can see. We've got a larger area here, which runs um, from the west of the site down, sort of curves round and faces south onto the corner of uh, the site with Asty Lane. Um, we've got a, a, a part of um, affordable housing up here, we've got some down here and some over here, which is accessed off a separate access road. Um, now, these are these are a mixture of affordable rent and shared ownership. Um, I, I don't know the exact which ones are which without zooming in, but they, they, they tend to be in sort of twos or threes. Um, do have support from our housing team. They're content with the placement of these site, uh, um, affordable units. Um, and I think part of that's driven by the registered social landlords for management of the sites. They prefer to be in it, it, small blocks, but they prefer them to still be in blocks rather than literally. So I think that's what's driven it slightly. Um, but from a planning point of view, I, I'm content that, that 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 does enough to to pepper pot throughout the site. But obviously, that's up to members to um, to determine. So thanks, Chair. I think that's probably covered. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dan. And I think you, you've covered those points. Um, I did think myself perhaps the parking thing that uh, I thought maybe the councillor tribe have got mixed up with another one. But uh, can, can I just ask the council? Actually, Chair, could I just clarify that that point for you? Yeah, yeah. I, I do. I do have parking down as, for another item as well. But this one now, Darren's pulled that up on the screen. My printout shows that the road goes through from Jasmine. Are, are we? Are, but yeah, on the thing he's just pulled up on the screen, it doesn't look like it does. Can I just can I just stop you there? I, you know, I thought you were just clarifying something. I've got. Can I just ask you? Is there any other member not spoken that wants to? No. In that case, oh, Councillor Watkins. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think Darren's explanation it, it make, makes it much clearer now of where the um, affordable and social housing will be, and I'm, I'm I'm much happier seeing that now. And his explanation as well about how how it makes it more manageable, um, obviously makes sense. Um, I'm I'm also happy that the um, we've we've had strategic housing comment on it, and as long as the the comments in the addendum are taken into consideration um, I'm, I'm happy with the application that's put in front of us thank you chair okay thank you and uh, apologies for interrupting you council tremors i just wanted to be fair to other members that hadn't already spoken so i don't have anybody Absolutely. else indicated so if you want to continue yeah um could Darren please put that thing up uh, that um layout map out because it shows on my printout in my hard copy pack here that it looks like you drive through from Jasmine into the estate. Um, that well, I didn't I didn't prepare the agenda um, this time, so I'm just presenting the item. So I, I don't know, but that sounds like those are the previously approved plans. Um, but I'm not 100%. Um, so, let me just oh, can you see my screen? Is it shared? Ooh. No. Oh, hang on. Sorry, bear with. Sorry, just trying to share the screen again. It's um, that should do it. No, that th there's there's no vehicular access through to Jasmine. Right, okay, so looking at yours, mine looks like there is on my printed copy, but there, that tiny gap is is showing that it isn't a through road. So this Correct. is another one of those developments where it's all off one entrance and exit, and that's the one on Astley Lane, is it? Uh, well, there's, there's two accesses. Um, one serves 13 plots and the other ser serves the other 156, so... Yeah, the, there's one serving the majority and one serving the, a small element. Tiny bit down there. There. So yeah, yeah, the, great, yeah. the big estate is just off a new access off Astley Lane and there's no vehicular access through from Jasmine at all. Not, there's not intended to be, no. 
Um, okay, so that, that, that sorts out that, the problem of, of that, people going through all the parked cars on that estate uh, and using it as a ramp mm. run and stuff. But it's another one of those big developments with uh, just one entrance and exit, really, isn't it? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I don't see any other member indicating, so the recommendation is as printed to grant planning permission subject to a legal agreement and the conditions printed. <coughs> Wendy, can I ask you to do the, no, the call, please? Yes, Chair. Please indicate for, against or abstain when your name is called. Councillor Gran. Against. Councillor Hancock. For. Councillor Lloyd. For. For. Councillor Pander. Against. Councillor Rudkin. For. Councillor Sargent. Against. Councillor Shepherd. For. Sorry, Councillor Shepherd, is that for? It is for. Thank you. Councillor Smith? Against. Councillor Tandy? For. Councillor Tromans? Against. Councillor Watkins? For. Councillor Wilson? Against. I do make that six for and six against, Wendy. Do you agree? Yes, Chair. In which case I use my casting vote and the, uh, the application is approved. Thank you. then takes us on to item number two, Darren, please. Um, Valeview, Nuneaton. Thanks, Chair. I'll just share my screen. Seem to be having a bit of trouble with that tonight, but just, just bear with. Okay. <clears throat> this is item two. This land rear of 79 to 117 Bellevue, Nuneaton. This item is an application. Mm. Sorry, could you mute your microphone, please, whoever? It's, it's really distracting. Thanks. I'm just going through and checking the and muting people, so don't be Thanks. offended if I mute anyone. Okay. This application is for full planning permission for 14 affordable dwellings to be built on land off Vale View, Nuneaton. It's being reported to committee as it is a major application on council owned land. The site itself is currently a large open space along the eastern section of Vale View. The site was overgrown and covered in vegetation. However, this was all removed prior to the application being received. The site itself is mostly flat with a slight decrease in level from the south of the site towards the north. The majority of Valview is characterised by two-storey terraced groups with hip roofs and a mixture of red brick, stone brick and rendering. On the opposite side of Valview to the site is Windsor Gardens, which is a newer development, mostly providing apartments which are styled as semi-detached houses. The key issues to assess in the determination of the application are the principle of the development, impact on residential amenity, impact on visual amenity, impact on highway safety, impact on environmental health matters, flooding, drainage, biodiversity and trees, impact on coal mining risk, and finally planning obligations. As mentioned, the application is a full application for 14 dwellings, all of which are to be affordable. The site is within, is within the urban area and within the settlement boundary. So this is in accordance with the policy DS3 of the adopted borough plan. It is designated as a non-strategic housing site, which is referenced NUN 348 Vale View. This is supported by policy DS5 of the borough plan. Given the siting is within the urban area and that it represents the efficient use of this currently empty site, the principle of development is considered acceptable. The distance standards, oh, 
pardon me, uh, in regard to impact on residential amenity, the distance standards between the site and the existing properties are met with sufficient space between new properties and the windows and amenity space of existing houses around the site. The new plots three and four have side facing windows which have a half metre shortfall to plot five's garden. Seven metres is normally required and in this case it's just 6.5. But to remedy this, given that these windows are secondary to the rooms that they serve, it is proposed to condition these windows to be obscure glazed and this will eliminate any significant over overlooking. Overall, it's considered that there will be no significant impact on residential amenity as a result of the development. In regard to the impact on visual amenity, the dwellings are to be constructed of modern materials with red brick and render used. The scale of the units will respect the established street scene and will follow the gentle drop in land levels on Vale View. The layout is logical, and even though some units have their side elevation onto the existing road, there is enough detail in that elevation to add interest. It is considered that there will be no significant harm to visual amenity as a result of the scheme. In regard to the impact on highway safety, Warwickshire County Council highways have no objection following some discussions and amended plans. Vehicular access is to be our Vale View, with all units having parking within their curtilage, access either directly from Vale View or the site's new access way. Warwickshire County Council highways have asked for some conditions and these are considered acceptable. And with these in mind, it is considered that there would be no unacceptable harm to highway safety as a result of the proposal. In regard to contaminated land and to noise and air quality, MBBC Environmental Health have assessed the scheme and have requested conditions to be applied. With these conditions added, any minimal harm by way of noise, etc., on new future occupiers is considered to be acceptable. The Environment Agency and Warwickshire County Council Flood Risk were consulted on the scheme. The EA had no comment and Warwickshire County Council Flood Risk were content with the scheme following some amendments and with the imposition of some conditions which are included on the agenda. The site has been cleared of young trees and scrub, but there are some semi-mature and mature small trees on the western boundary. An ecology audit for the site identified a biodiversity loss and recommended an off-site biodiversity offsetting scheme. MBBC parks have no objection to the proposal subject to conditions. In regard to the impact on coal mining, the Coal Authority removed their objection following amendments and additional details submitted by the applicant. The geo-environmental assessment confirmed that the site will have no in adverse impact on coal mining heritage. In regard to planning obligations, obligations totaling £74,000 have been requested <clears throat> by MBBC Parks, George Elliott Hospital Trust and MBBC Sports Development. A financial viability assessment has been submitted which attempted to justify the non-viability of the scheme and this has been assessed as being sound. It states that the scheme would be unviable if the obligations were to be required. This is regrettable but the guidance is clear that unviable sites will not be required to provide obligations when there is a financial viability issue. No obligations can be sought here therefore and this is in accordance with national guidance. In conclusion, the proposal is acceptable and therefore recommended for approval subject to, subject to the conditions set out on the agenda. Thanks, Chair. OK, thanks very much, Darren. Um, we do have a speaker, Mr Roberts. Hello, Chair. The, the, uh, the egg timer will start when you do. OK, um, Chair, ladies and gentlemen of the committee, Thank you for this opportunity to speak in support of the application. My name is John Roberts and I'm from RGMP, the architect for the application. I believe your officer's report provides a very fair and balanced assessment of the merits of the site, but I'd like to emphasise the following points. We have worked constructively and objectively with your officers to be at a position where the scheme is presented with a recommendation to approve before you tonight. There are no technical objections to the development and all other comments raised during the, the application were addressed. This development was built using modern methods of construction, with modules constructed in the factory and delivered and assembled on site. This will reduce the amount of time on site by approximately 12 weeks compared to more traditional forms of construction, thereby reducing disruption of residents and meaning the dwellings will be occupied sooner. 
This also offers higher levels of workmanship, finishes and insulation compared to traditional brick and block forms of construction. This site will provide much needed affordable homes. The site will be self-sufficient in terms of parking and ample space is being provided by the dwellings at a rate acceptable to county highways. The layout has been assessed in terms of residential amenity and found to comply with the policy standards within the residential design guide. There is a shortage of affordable housing across the borough and homelessness has risen. Smaller properties are needed to provide homes for smaller families. We have spoken to Jane Grant, Head of Strategic Housing, and the mix of one bed, two bed and three bed units is acceptable. We purposefully provided a mix of dwellings to provide a balanced community. Housing strategy are currently requesting that a proportion of one beds are provided on most, if not all, new planning applications for housing developments in the borough. Of the 1,725 applicants on the housing register, 45% are waiting for one beds, 35% for two beds, and 15% for three beds. Your officer concludes the design allowed is acceptable and will make a positive contribution to the housing supply in the borough. I therefore trust the committee will support your officer's recommendation. Thank you. OK, thank you, Mr Roberts. Does any member have any points of clarification? No, OK, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, in, that's the only speaker on this item. Um, in which case, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation, which is to grant planning permission subject to the conditions printed? Is that seconded? Second, yeah. Councillor, Second. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Watkins and Tandy. Any member? No? Okay. Oh, hang on. Councillor Watkins? Yeah, so, sorry, Chair. I'm, I'm having difficulty raising and lowering hand. Um, yeah, I'm happy to support this um, application tonight. It is it is what we need within the borough, and um, it will be a well built, um, affordable housing. Um, hopefully, to help us get our, our waiting list down. Um, so, I, like like I said previously, I have been working with the officers on this, and um, I'm happy with what we've come up here tonight. So I'm happy to um, approve um, to go along with this application. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Does any other member wish to speak? If not, then I'll. I'll go to the to the vote. Unless I see somebody put their hand up in dissent, I'll assume everybody's happy with it. Okay, Wendy, are you happy with that? That that's unanimous. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. If we can then, Darren, move on to item number three, please. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Oh. Right, sorry, just trying to share my screen. It's really slow today. <clears throat> there we go. I think that hopefully should have done it. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Chair. Um, OK, this takes us on to item three, which is Woodlands Road, 99 Woodlands Road. This proposal is a full application for the erection of nine dwellings at 99 Woodlands Road, Bedworth. The site is a fairly rectangular piece of land fronting Woodlands Road. It includes the domestic curtilage of 99 Woodlands Road, land to the side and the rear. The site is accessed by a relatively narrow track which widens to the side of number 99. Further in, the land is gated and beyond which there is a small area with hard standing and some vehicular parking. To the north and east are agricultural fields. To the east and southeast, as well as within the site, there are some ridge and furrow field formations. To the west is Woodlands Road and the fields beyond. Woodlands Road is an arterial route with ribbon development of a mix of house types and ages. The feel of this area is transitional in, 
in, in terms of its character from urban town to countryside. The nearby terraced housing which fronts onto Woodlands Road are numbers 91 to 97 Woodlands Road. Notwithstanding the objections received, this application is being reported to committee at the request of Councillor Carl Evans. The key issues to assess in the determination of this application are the principle of residential development, impact on a non-designated heritage asset, impact on residential amenity, impact on visual amenity, ecology and habitat, and the impact on highway safety. <clears throat> in terms of the principle of residential development, the site forms a small part of the Borough Plan Strategic Housing Allocation HSG4. This slide shows an extract from the Borough Plan with the proposed site shown in red and HSG4 shown as a thick grey line. Um, hopefully that comes through, there's the red line obviously, and then this thick grey line which goes around this bit and this bit is HSG4. Um, it's not the best plan, so apologies. Um, the allocation as a whole is proposed to have around 689 dwellings and community facilities and, and, and other infrastructure. As this application is for only nine dwellings and occupies a relatively small peripheral part of the allocation, not all the site-specific requirements set out in the policy are relevant, especially as financial contributions can only be sought for 10 or more dwellings. This slide shows uh, the proposed uses within the adopted concept plan. And the area marked in striped green, which is earmarked for informal open space. The site is outlined in red here. The reasons why this application site was proposed to be used as informal open space um, in the concept plan was to retain the ridge and furrow on site. Because of the nature of the ridge and furrow, it only really lends itself to informal open space and not formal laid out leisure area, pitches or play parks, etc. This inclusion in the concept plan was driven mainly by the heritage assessment the council commissioned as part of the evidence base for the borough plan. The heritage assessment recognised the high quality ridge and furrow and stated this should be retained where possible. The concept plan is a material consideration uh, which mirrors this. The applicant has commissioned a site specific up to date report analysing the ridge and furrow which concluded the ridge and furrow on the site, rem the remains of it were fragmentary within the site and which have been truncated through the construction of Woodlands Road and existing residential development. Warwickshire archaeology team were consulted on this application and have no, and have no objection uh, subject to a condition requesting trial trenching. Weight has been given to the adopted concept plan, which is designed as guidance in decision making. In conclusion, though, whilst finely balanced, it is considered that this up-to-date heritage report, along with Warwickshire County Council's archaeology response, means that the earlier advice in, from the borough plan and the concept plan is somewhat superseded and the refusal of the scheme based on this would be unlikely to be found unreasonable. This is especially so given that the previous refusal by the council, which is currently going through the appeals process, was refused purely on highway safety grounds. In regard to the impact on residential immunity the, of existing properties, 95, 97 and 99 Woodlands Road have rear extensions and under the, <coughs> excuse me, under the design and construction SPD, extension windows cannot be protected. Where there are original windows, the distance standards are met. The nearest new property is proposed to be a bungalow, and it is considered that as well as its orientation, um, at its height as well as its orientation will mean that any overlooking issues can be easily dealt with via a boundary treatment condition, and this will not provide a sense of enclosure to existing gardens. <clears throat> In respect of the new properties, there is a small breach of half a metre where plot seven is set further back than plot six, which runs along its side boundary. The council's SPD would not normally want to see more, more of a projection than three metres, but 3.5 is shown here. The garages of plot two and five are along boundaries with others within the new development for six metres, and so will provide some sense of enclosure. However, these are considered very minor issues, especially where new properties are concerned as there is an element of buyer beware when purchasing the property um, and refusal on this, on this basis would likely to be unjustified. In regard to the impact on visual immunity, the development as, state, as stated, sorry, in terms of the pattern of properties in the area is largely ribbon development and the new properties will be different to this. No, however, the proposal will only be seen from the road when immediately in front of the site. An existing hedge is to be retained and could be conditioned 
for its retention, although obviously hedges can die back and that it can't be considered as a permanent feature. It is considered the site is large enough at nine dwellings to provide for its own cohesive development, and there are such developments along Woodlands Road, such as Missing Oak Close and Dove Close. There are traditional elements within the design with brick detailing, bow windows and gable features, including two bungalows. In conclusion, the proposal is considered to only have a very limited effect on, vi on visual amenity. Warwickshire Wildlife Trust objected to the previous application, but made no comments on the new scheme. Their objection relates to the piecemeal development of a strategic site rather than any particular ecological concerns. Bat and bird boxes and cladding that can aid bats and small birds is to be provided on some of the plots and fencing is proposed to have gaps for hedgehogs. The ecology report submitted with the application concluded that the presence of bats for foraging and commuting and presence of small mam mammals and bad passing badgers were low. Nests were recorded within the building, existing buildings but could be dealt with via condition and the proposal of new bird and bat bricks would provide alternative nesting. There was only considered to be a small potential for reptiles and amphibians. However, nearby off-site ponds do have great crested newts, but they carry a statutory protection. <clears throat> In regard to the impact on highway safety, Warwickshire County Council were consulted and returned a response of no objection subject to conditions. The Highway Authority noted in their response that the previous application had been objected to and refused and was currently going through the appeals process. The Highways Authority and the applicant's highways consultant met on site to discuss matters. They agreed the site dimensions, including the road width, during the site visit. They went on to state that the speed survey submitted was just a speed survey and it was not intended to assess capacity. <clears throat> With this in mind, they agree that the speed survey, survey is broadly representative despite being carried out during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is because both nationally and locally it's been shown that speeds have, if anything, increased. Additionally, they highlight that some concerns over on-street parking have been raised. However, they pointed out that during several site visits, no cars were witnessed parked directly opposite the site. They go on to say that if when the access is constructed, vehicles should not park within 10 metres of a junction. Conditions were recommended and these will be added to any approval and it is therefore considered that there will be no unacceptable harm to highway safety as a result of the scheme. When considered in the round, the extent extent of any harm is not significantly detrimental and would therefore represent sustainable development and that the benefits of granted permission would significantly and demonstrably outweigh any harm when assessed against the policies of the borough plan and the MPPF as taken as a whole. In conclusion therefore this decision is a very finely balanced one but one where having assessed all the material considerations the recommendation is one of approval subject to conditions. Thanks Chair. Apologies, I didn't unmute myself. Uh, the, I believe our first speaker is Councillor Evans. Do we have Councillor Evans? Do can you hear me? Hello. Yes, can hear you now, Councillor Evans. Sorry, Chair, do apologise. Um, right, so I would ask members of the committee to consider voting against the officer's recommendation and therefore review the application in sitting in front of you this evening. Before I say why I believe the committee should review this application, I would like to remind members that they are, uh, that they considered a very similar application on this site, virtually identical, and members unanimously voted to refuse it. On the 15th of July at full council, members decided to vote in favour of adopting the SPDs for policy HSG4 within the borough plan. Within these um, documents included the concept plans for the site. Land that this application lies on is de designated clearly as formal open space, including playing fields. This can be found on page 26 of the report. Whilst I objected to these concept plans being um, agreed at full council, um, a decision has been made and we now need to stick with what's been proposed within them. 
The proposed proposed formal open space within the concept plan, which happens to be on this piece of land, would provide a natural space between the existing conurbation and new dwellings, which may be built on the fields next to this application, which have been earmarked for housing. The report presented to full council last month regarding these plans, sorry, a few months ago, regarding these plans states on page 55, SPDs provide more detailed advice and guidance in relation to the implementation and interpretation of certain planning policies with the aim of delivering sustainable development. SPDs do not form part of the development plan for the borough, but they are material consideration when determining planning applications. This is also supported by the comments on the last page of your addendum. Despite the so-called evidence which has been presented to the committee by the applicant's consultant, I would stress that the evidence presented to the council by its own consultants, namely ECUS consultants, has not changed. And as the planning inspector stated very clearly in the recent hearings, the Ridge and Furrow on this site is of high quality. The council is refusing to change the concept plan in light of the new evidence. Therefore, the committee must stick with the council's current policy and allow this application to go um, um, well, needs, needs to refuse the application because it just contradicts the council's policy that was adopted at full council. So I feel if, if the application was agreed to, it would set a very danger, pre dangerous precedent for future applications and will send a very dangerous message out to developers in the future that they can just ignore our adopted council policy. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much. Are there any points of clarification? No, in which case, can I move on to Councillor Brown? Thank you, Chair. Just unmuting. OK. Um, yes, um, this application is a virtual duplicate of one that was rejected not so long ago, rejected unanimously by this committee. It's now returned with some minor modifications and I would ask that it's rejected again because the fundamentals of the application have not altered. The borough plan has been a source of intense, often heated debate in this council and for all the disagreements I think we can agree that one of the purposes was to prevent speculative planning applications by developers. This uh, application, although it falls within a development site, is actually set on a piece of land that's set out for open space as a buffer between the existing properties and the new ones that could eventually be built on the larger part of the site. Looking at this application, I have to ask whether the borough plan actually has any value. If a developer can just come forward with an application to build upon land that's shown as open space within our concept plans, plans that were approved by this council, then what is the point of the plan if we're just going to roll over, let developers set aside the SPD and build what they want where they want? This is your chance to show that the borough plan actually has a purpose. Um, as you've already heard, the evidence provided by the council's council hasn't changed, nor has the assessment of the planning inspector as to the value of the ridge and furrow that informed the adopted borough plan. And as it said, it should be retained where, where possible. Well, it is possible to retain it by refusing this application. We've also got the issue of the provision within the developer's plans for an access to the wider part of the site to facilitate the development of a much larger site. So in effect, this application is a sort of a Trojan horse, a nine house application, no contributions required, but giving access to the wider development site along what's already an admittedly narrow road. Woodlands Road is one of the few roads on the west of Bedworth that allows recreational use by cyclists, horse riders and the like to get out to the countryside. It's a narrow road and passing places for horses, cyclists and things are few and far between. If we allow the, this development to go ahead, we basically put in 600 houses down a narrow lane and allowing them to come onto Woodlands Road at a point where it's going to compromise the safety of people on horses, cyclists and the like, the people who are most vulnerable on the roads. So I would ask that you refuse this application, please. Thank you. Um, does any member have any points of clarification? No, thank you. Our next speaker is Mr Mayer. And I... Jaden, I don't know whether you're able to. I, I think Mr. Mayor asked if we could have them photographs put up, but I don't know whether that's possible. Um, I, I don't think we can do that, Chair. Um, 
just because we, we we've always refused in the past. We we, we allow things to be sent round um, to members via they, email, and which they, I believe they, they have been. Yeah, they did go to all members anyway. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Sorry to sound uh, awkward. I think that's just the way we have to do it. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like a few points uh, clearing up if I can. Uh, I'd like the highways officer to explain how the dangers of the cars parked off opposite in the photographs you've just been talking about to the proposed site entrance are taken into consideration uh, in the developer's road safety uh, audit. Uh, I had a, an email from the um, highways chap, Mr. Burroughs, um, saying that if somebody had said it earlier as well, that if car, cars parked opposite are um, within 10 metres of the new proposed entrance, uh, I'd just like to know, you know, what guarantee you could give me that cars parked opposite, which happens on a daily basis and, that, and has happened for 28 years while I've been living down here. Uh, I just wondered um, what, what he could say about how they're going to be stopped. Because if they can't be stopped, I mean, he said to me about the, in, in the email that um, it's a uh, highway code that shouldn't be parked there. I mean, that's that's just like saying that um, there shouldn't even be any um, speed limit signs because nobody had speed, you know. Um, I'd, li I'd like you to explain to me um, uh, if the cars are going to be parked there on an everyday basis, would the highways officer agree that it would be dangerous and therefore require another road safety audit to try and overcome this problem? Uh, could the developer, uh, I think Miss uh, Nicola Lee's here from them, confirm that the new landscape character sur survey uh, carried out by themselves by Cotswold uh, Archaeology uh, that scores the earthworks rigid for a paltry 8 out of 63, may be down to the fact that uh, the developer sent in two enormous tractors and ploughed up the medieval rigid for a before sending in the original application. Um, I, I, I do believe that that letter has been sent round to all members as well. Uh, when asked at the time why, she, why, why it was done, in this letter she explained, and it was done in bird, the, the, the main part of bird nesting season as well, um, It was uh, the reason that she gave that it was done was that apparently they were going to grow hay uh, it, instead of you know using it as a ridge and furrow. Uh, this was a blatant lie and obviously a way of removing an important landscape character asset, which helps them with this application. Hence the Cotswold document. Surely members must realise that this sort of practice by Cartwrights is unacceptable and does not give residents a fair play for playing field in this application tonight. Also, given the officers admit that the recommendation is a finely balanced one, does this piecemeal application sit well with members given that it's for nine dwellings out of a site specific of 689, it provides no financial contributions to the local plan. And, and like Councillor Brown said, it sets out a very dangerous point. Uh, planning policy have not Could objected you to finish this. off, Mr Mayor, please. Can, can, I, can I just just finish off? Cheers, thank you. One minute. Uh, OK, cheers. Planning policy have not objected to this application, and it's a bit of a mystery. Uh, surely they could... Uh, cannot allow public consulted concept plans adopted by members into council policy to be thrown on the fire. I fully accept that tweaks in concept plans are needed, but to drive a coach and horses through it is unacceptable. In the concept plans, this part uh, of the site was down as ridge and for an open space, not residential. Also in the concept plans, there wasn't an entrance there. Passing this tonight sets a very dangerous precedent for future applications uh, and other landowners, skill QCs, QCs will be licking their lips. Okay, thank and you, Mr. Mayor. And financial Mr. Mr. It could Mayor, be on our way grounds and safety. Contravenes council policy, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Cheers. No, no it's okay. I, I gave you a little bit of leeway because you broke yeah. up one point in your thing. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, okay. Uh, are there any points of clarification? No? Okay, thank you. Our next speaker is Ms. Nicola Lee. Good evening, Chair. Yes, I'm here. I don't know whether you can see me, yes, hear me. We can. we can. Thank you. Lovely. Do you want, are you happy for me to start? Yes, the time will start when you do. 
Lovely. Uh, good evening, Chair and members of the committee. Uh, as you're aware, I'm Nicola Lee from Cartwright Homes. I'm here this evening regarding our planning application, which is before you for your consideration. Our application is for the erection of nine dwellings at 99 Woodlands Road, Bedworth. Members will probably recall an application at this site for nine dwellings was refused by com planning committee late last year. And as one of your uh, members earlier said, that this is uh, a, a replica of the planning application, uh, which, which it is because the only reason last time was that it was uh, refused on highway safety grounds. Um, this related to the visibility displays from the proposed development onto Woodlands Road. Uh, following this refusal, an appeal was lodged and it is currently with the planning inspectorate and this decision is due in the next couple of months. Um, however, Cartwright Homes did feel that because of the, the, the grounds for refusal, there was uh, reasons and technical abilities to be able to overcome this reason for, for refusal. Hence, we resubmitted the application as we've worked with Tony Burroughs from Warwickshire County Highways to overcome their concerns. They raised no objections with regards to our proposal and as such, this application is before you with a recommendation to approve. Um, as a local family run company, Cartwright Homes, work with the local planning authority regarding our applications in this instance, we've worked with the Highway Authority to overcome their objections and hope that you agree with the recommendation of the planning officer this evening. Um, if you do have any questions, please uh, please do ask them. I'd be happy to answer them. Many thanks for your time this evening. OK, thank you. Are there any points of clarification? No? OK, then. If not, that's all of our speakers. So to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation, which is to grant planning permission subject to the conditions printed? Is that seconded? Seconded, Chair. Sure. Councillor Tandy. OK, thank you. Um, I think I'm going to ask for some clarification from the officers on the points that have, uh, have been raised. It'll, it'll help members in their thing. Um, Darren, there was mention made that members should consider refusing this because of the, the open space aspect of it. It was also mentioned that this is high quality region furrow land. Yeah, I thought in your presentation, uh, you kind of said the opposite to that. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, so, yeah, the as uh, Mr. Mayor and um, the, the, the members have said, um, the the site does have ridge and furrow on it. And during the background papers for the borough plan, it was across the whole of HSG, oh, sorry, seven is it? Sorry, I've forgotten my notes. Um, HSG four, four apologies. Um, so across, pardon? Look, can, can I just say, can people not interrupt? If they want to speak, Please raise your hand. It, it makes things confusing for people. And I've got to say, uh, Darren will be trying to uh, look through his notes. Darren has stood in at the last minute because the presenting officer, unfortunately, was taken ill. So, Darren, if you can carry on, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, so the ECHOS report that was a background paper for the borough plan um, looked at Ridge and Furrow across the entire of the strategic allocation. And it said that the original furrow was high quality um, and although it's not of great use for um, formal open space because of obviously the, the shape of the ground you can't sort of you know, kick a ball about on it as a pitch or whatever it was designated as informal open space in the concept plan um, so this part of the site this 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 application site is part of a larger allocation and it's part of the informal open space of that allocation now, as part of the application running its course, the applicant submitted a ridge and furrow assessment prepared by experts. Um, we've got their report to say 
uh, the quality of the what the stuff on site isn't high enough to retain. We've also got Warwickshire Archaeology's comments to say that they've got no objection to the development. Um, yeah, well, what was the second uh, point? I'm afraid, Kat. Sorry, apologies. There was another. Um, I, I think you've covered them. It was about. Oh, okay. The, it was about whether it's high quality or poor quality and. Oh, marvelous! Yeah, yeah. Okay, we got thank that you. Um, Thanks, just before, Yeah, thank you. Just before I bring uh, members into the debate. Uh, because they've been raised, I'd also like to, if I could ask um, the the county highways officers if they could respond to the uh, the concerns made about parking in effect opposite, you know, on the T junction, and uh, whether that's dangerous or not. Tony or sorry, um, yeah. Evening, ah, Chair. It's thanks, Tony Burrows. Tony. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've spoken with Mr Mayor on many occasions and discussed this issue about parking opposite. As stated in my response and in emails to Mr Mayor, uh, once the access is constructed, people shouldn't park within the 10 metres. Um, there's no guarantees that people won't park there because we can't guarantee that we're not in control of people but they shouldn't as stated it is contrary to the highway code there is space on street to park elsewhere and possibly within the development site once it's constructed will also be available okay and that and that, that advice would be what you're giving to to this committee as well yes it would Thank and you. regarding the road safety order it has been audited and has been reviewed and on neither occasion is the on-street park and been raised. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Okay, any member wish to speak? Councillor Gran. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it, it's a game of spot the difference because I can't spot any differences between this application and the previous one, which we rejected unanimously about a year ago. Uh, nothing's changed since the borough plan hasn't changed. This was a uh, buffer zone within the borough plan, not for housing. In fact, it's uh, a bit disingenuous on the map because uh, where it has the red outline showing the site, it also has a black um, line underneath to show that that's not within the HSG4 site allocation for housing. Uh, nothing's changed highways wise. I feel like any uh, new reports that are made during uh, lockdown period are going to throw up completely different results to what would normally be thrown out there. Uh, I don't know why this is back before us when this exact application, because it is the same application, let's face it, is going to appeal at the moment. And uh, another problem with the design of this site is the road access, not only because it would be uh, dangerous for vehicles to come in and out of there, but also because the whole left-hand side is along where the hedgerow is. And it wouldn't surprise me if something unfortunate happened to said hedgerow in the future, which would allow uh, there to be an extra uh, road access from there onto the proposed HSG4 estate. So that could cause further highways problems in the future. I can't support this because it's no different to what we've already voted on. And it feels like... Um, the applicants wasting our time by bringing this before us again. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Councillor Tromans, I think I saw your hand up before Councillor Sargent. Councillor Tromans. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, on the one hand, this wor is worrying for, for one bunch of reasons. On the other hand, uh, for, for others, I mean, it, it's only a small development and yes, I'm sure officers have worked very diligently with cart rights to make sure the roofs don't look too out of keeping and, and all the rest of it. That's not the point. The, the point is we, the borough plan was contentious at the best of times, HSG1 particularly, HSG4 even more. And I remember the consultations um, and to produce the concept plans, there were lots of promises about Ridge and Furrow were to be kept as open space and not built on. I mean, it's a large area that's expected to have about 
what, uh, 689 houses on it. And, and what people's expectations were, whether they liked it or not, was that once these concept plans were adopted by the borough and part of the borough plan, that they would happen as described. So there would be a large development or several large developments uh, around preserve uh, on the areas you could build on around uh, preserving the rich and furrow open space and all the rest of it. Um, what this is is something completely different. It's it's uh, you know it's almost like salami tactics. A, a Trojan horse, I think, uh, Councillor Brown referred to it as, where we've got these nine houses. Um, that are, are making a strategic cut through. Um, the first bit of land to be built on was supposed to be the very last, the ridge and furrow, the stuff that was supposed to be preserved. I hear people trying to say, oh, well, it's maybe not as good as some other bits of ridge and furrow. But the fact is, it's the very last bit you should be looking at to build on, according to the concept plans and the promises that were made, was the ridge and furrow. And it looks like, you know, the, the next thing is that that could easily be extended onto another bit that would be rich in furrow. And it's all, oh, well, we let this one through as an exception. And so it, it's only another nine more housing, another nine more. And we're ending up with a lot of development stretched over many years that's dragging the whole thing out and wouldn't produce a penny back to the borough in terms of community infrastructure or Section 106 or whatever. And they're avoiding their, their financial contributions. That was the whole point of in the borough plan. The concept plans being 700 houses, these areas protected, um, the gin furrow and the rest of it built on if it had to be. Uh, I'm still not happy that uh, HSG1 and HSG4 and a bunch of the others ended up in the way they did. But given those concept plans were consulted on and adopted and the expectation was very clearly set, I, I can't see why we would want to, to start this way, it, it just sets such a bad precedent and opens the door to so many other things. Uh, I mean, I was going to raise about uh, the cars now, but I mean, that's already been been done to death. But my answer would be to, to highways officers, yes, you know, if we build a large development, if we have a major turning, people don't, for the sake of their cars, park opposite, um, whether it's legal to or not. But when you've just got a little turning there, people are going to carry on doing it. And that's going to cut down the, the, the road safety no end. I think there's a difference between saying the letter of the law and the pra practicalities on the ground. And if this was a huge turning uh, with multiple lanes and whatever and um, uh, to a great big development, then I think, yes, it's reasonable for highways officers to say, well, if people park opposite it now, they won't in the future. Um, but I think with this little turning, people are just going to carry on doing what they, they were doing before. And we have to recognise the practicalities on the ground. But I think the bigger issues here are, are much more about, you know, the, the fact that if you have these concept plans for large scale development and you're protecting very special kinds of uh, of green space like Regin Furrow, you pretty much need to follow that. And the first application that comes in shouldn't be to build on Regin Furrow. Thank you. I think you're muted, Chair. Apologies. Um, I was trying to stop some of the background noise by muting. Uh, um, yeah, sorry, Darren, I was just going to say, I'm going to bring other speakers in, but can you just bear in mind, I think you need to come back and address particularly two issues. One about the, uh, the concept plan, and also the second one is really about the difference between this application and the one before. OK, Councillor Sargent. OK, thanks, Chair. Um, just really su supporting what uh, Councillor Tromans has just said, it's a part of what I was actually going to say. The other thing that I was going to add was um, the adopted roads. Um, will, the, will the road be adopted? And the splays, it, there was some talk about the splays weren't good enough. So if we could ask the um, county officers if, there's, if that's changed. And... Um, and I think Councillor Tromans talked about the com concept plan and the open space, so I, I won't um, carry on with, with that bit. Um, so thanks, Chair. OK, um, thank you. Again, Tony, if I bring you in after the speakers, if you can uh, address that point that's just been, 
been made about whether the roads are adopted or proposed roads adopted or not. Um, Councillor Watkins. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just going on really what, what's been said, saying that there's no difference between this and what, what's been proposed before, but we've already heard off the county officers that there is there is a difference. Last time it didn't have Warwickshire County Council's backing, this time it does. We've also heard about bigger, bigger planning applications being built. This ain't about bigger applications. We have to deal with what we've got in front of us. This is about nine applications and this is what we need to be dealing with. We don't need to be dealing with 600 or 500 or anything else. We need to be going with the advice that we've got and the advice that we've got of county officers is that it's safe. Um, so that's all I needed to say. Thank you, uh, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Tandy. Thank you, Chair. You were going to ask Darren to, before I speak, could you ask Darren to answer one of your questions, Chair, into what is the difference between the last application and this one? Okay, I will do. Darren, if you want to um, address that, and what, while you're doing that, you may as well mention about the the comments have been made about the concept plan. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks, Chair. Um, so to deal with the difference, yeah, essentially there's been more supporting information to uh, reassure highways that the site is acceptable. Um, and as Councillor Watkins uh, alluded to, we now have a removal of objection from Highways Authority. Um, so it's been demonstrated satisfactorily to the Highways Authority that the, the, the access is safe. Um, in terms of the concept plan, um, yeah, as members have touched on and, and Mr. Mayor, um, the concept plan is um, adopted guidance. Um, it's a very finely balanced one and it's one that, um, you know, we haven't just suddenly thought up a recommendation. It's, it's taken a long time to come to this point. Um, and it's one where po policy is policy. So the policy sets out that this is site for residential development. The guidance then says this is how it should look um, unless it can be justified otherwise. And in this case, that we feel that the applicant has adequately justified that the site doesn't need to be retained for informal open space because of the lack of ridge and furrow quality. Um, that's very finely balanced, as I said. Um, one thing I would say is that obviously the first application being so similar to this one and only being refused on highway safety grounds is one thing. This one's very similar. If we're not refusing it on highway safety grounds, it may be considered by an inspector to be unreasonable to consider it against other reasons for refusal now. But OK, thanks, Chair. OK, thank you. Um, Ashley, I think you wanted to come in as well. Thank you, Chair. It to be honest, it was the point that Darren just made. So, um, obviously, members of uh, on a number of occasions referenced that the application was previously refused and, and nothing's changed. Well, as Council Watkins uh, made clear, obviously, we haven't got a highways objection. Um, the, the sole reason for refusal last time, and this is important for members considering this application in front of them, what was highways? So, Darren has explained to, to the committee how he's balanced the concept plan and the application in front of you. So you've obviously got that explanation, which um, would have been presented at, at the previous committee. And on the previous occasion, it wasn't sort of deemed that a refusal reason was required in, in respect to the concept plan. So therefore, members just need to bear that in mind as part of any decision that they come up with here. It, it, uh, that's quite an important point because as Darren's articulated, if we're now bringing in a new refusal reason that that would need to be justified particularly given the similarities between the two applications that's it for me chair okay thank you i will bring you back in councillor tandy it's just to check that you're finished but while we've got officers um uh, uh, making comments can i can i just ask either darren or tony about the question about whether the road will be adopted or not 
Hello, Chair. Um, no, Warwickshire County Council wouldn't consider adopting the development uh, based on the size of it. Um, it just serves the development only in, and it doesn't um, have any public amenity, so we wouldn't consider adopting it. Not, not at this stage anyway. Not at this stage, no. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sandy, it, had you finished or? No, I, I, I wanted to hear the response for, from officers in relation to the question, but I do have to say, Jet, I'm not overly happy with this application and the reasons why it has been um, brought back in relation to the Highways Authority, because I was a bit um, nonplussed by the question that was asked about, well, will cars put or still park opposite? Well, you know, shrug of the shoulders, they will if they will and they won't if they won't, which was an attitude I wasn't overly uh, happy with. I'm even more bothered now to learn that at this stage, and I accept the reasons why, that the road would be unadopted because I have major problems in my own patch with unadop unadopted roads on one of my estates. So I really have to think about this one, Chair, because I'm not very happy with uh, with the reasons being given for um, changing the decision that was made on, a, on an application that was very similar. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. I I'm just going to say on the issue about road adoptions, I mean, we've heard why the county wouldn't adopt it at this stage anyway, but we have many, many um, roads that aren't adopted. Um, I live on, the, on an estate where the roads aren't adopted. Uh, we have a management scheme in place that looks after after that, that road. Um, there's some bad examples. There's also some good examples. It doesn't always mean to say that um, roads not being adopted is a bad thing. Uh, Councillor Lloyd. Thank you, Chair. Um, certainly on this one, Chair, I'm having difficulty. I've got to be quite honest. I know, it, you know, people have said it's only nine houses, um, but, um, you know, we've been told in the past uh, on numerous occasions from the government inspector all the way down to our own planning officers um, that the Ridge and Farrow within this area uh, is, in, is important to the local, uh, the local area. And, you know, it was one of the um, reasons, I believe, in uh, certainly one of the uh, inspector's reports that uh, it should be retained. Um, well, I know you know, it's probably only a small part of the Ridge and Farrow, but um, if we start chipping away at it, um, then eventually it's all lost. I know it's difficult um, to uh, maintain it as uh, open space when you've got development going on around there, but nevertheless, it's an important part of the local history. So on that, on that issue alone, not on the highway issue, because I believe the highway issues will be overcome. Um, you know, uh, you've got county highways turning around and saying they've got no um, concerns uh, with the highway issues. Um, the incidents about the uh, parking opposite, well, I remember years ago, I parked my car legally on the road um, by my drive and I was told by the police to shift it because I was blocking the blocking the highway because a bus couldn't get up. Um, so I know what will happen. Um, you know, if people do unfortunately park opposite that area, it will be enforced. Um, so on the Ridge and Farrow, and only on the Ridge and Farrow, um, I'm having difficulties with this, and I need officers to convince me um, that um, you know. Um, you know, the loss of that Ridge and Farrow there um, isn't going to mean the loss of Ridge and Farrow in other areas because I'm not convinced on that. OK, thank you. I mean, it, it's clearly a concern by a number of members, so I'll, I will bring Darren back in a, in a bit. But I've got Wendy, you had indicated to speak. Yes, Chair, I just wanted to follow up on the point that Ashley and Darren had made. It would be remiss of me not to. Um, I just wanted to point out that obviously there's an expectation that planning decisions will be consistent. Um, the sole reason for refusal on the previous application related to highways. So introducing a new reason at this stage may be a cost risk. 
obviously it would have to be very well justified. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Um, right, I don't have any other speakers. Uh, Darren or any other officer, anything you need to come back on? No, thanks, Chair. OK, in which case the recommendation which was... Oh, Tony, you've just popped up. Did, oh, he's gone yes, again. sorry. I, I put my camera on before I should have put my hand up. Sorry, Chair. Um, all I was going to say was Councillor Watkin, uh, Councillor Sergeant, sorry, asked about the visibility displays. So oh, I yeah, thought I'd you. better answer thank him before you carried on. Um, a speed survey was carried out and the available visibility display shown on the drawing exceed what would be required by the measured speed limit speeds measured on site. And that's from both the vehicle access and from the pedestrian crossing points. I hope that clarifies. OK, it does. Thank you. Right. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, to grant planning permission subject to the conditions printed. Wendy, could I ask you to go through the list, please? Yes, Chair. Please indicate for, against or abstain when your name is called. Councillor Graham? Against. Councillor Hancocks? For. Councillor Lloyd? Councillor Lloyd? I'll come back to Councillor Lloyd Chair. Councillor Pandair. Against. Councillor Redkin. Councillor Redkin. I'll come back to Councillor Redkin. Councillor Sargent. Against. Councillor Shepherd. Against. Councillor Smith. Against. Councillor Tandy. Abstain. Councillor Tromans. Against. Councillor Watkins. For. Councillor Wilson. Against. If I can come back to Councillor Lloyd. Sorry about that, Chair. It kept freezing. Against. And. Councillor Redkin. Sorry, I'm having trouble unmuting. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, against. Chair, I make that nine against, two four, and one abstention. Okay, thank you. So that the uh, application has not been approved. Councillor Smith. Yes, Chair. Um, we've got a bit of a dilemma. I think uh, the, the, the main reasoning I'm hearing... Councillor Smith, uh, before we have any sort of debate, you need to somebody needs to propose something. Yeah, that's where I'm coming to, Chair. The only thing I'm hearing from members is that, uh, to are test... You, this... Are you proposing something, Councillor Smith? Yeah. Can you move... Test... Can you move something, Jan? I'll move, I'll move that, um, I, I, I'm just trying to sort the wording out in my head. Um, I, I move that it um, is refused on the basis of the concept plan and the, um, uh, what's the word in, with the ridge and furrow. Um, okay, yeah. I'm happy to second that, Chair. Sorry, I'm just trying to uh, write down what's... Uh... <coughs> right, so what, I've, what I'm hearing and um, is that Councillor Smith has moved refusal that this is in conflict with the concept plan, not Councillor Smith, if you agree. Yes. <laughs> uh, and also 
it would have an impact on the region furrow um, area, land area. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Grant as a second. Are you happy that I've got the gist of that right? Yes. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Richard. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. Refusal um, because of it uh, not being in line with the concept plan and the impact on the region furrow. Um, I think I need to get some officer advice on this and uh, as it was before in in, in as much as uh, <coughs> can can those items uh, be supported by officers at an appeal? <clears throat> Thanks Chair. So the movement I've got is refusal on the grounds of conflict with the concept plan yeah. in a formal open space through the loss of Ridge and Furrow. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously the recommendation was, was approval. I, I think we run the risks of significant costs um, with that reason for refusal. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, as the chair of this committee I do have to uh, make sure members are fully aware of the consequences of going against the, the officer advice on this. Um, right, any member? Councillor Tromans. Um, thank you chair, I am very mindful of costs, I understand exactly what the officer says but surely you know us being on the hook for significant costs is only where we've acted unreasonably. And I think everybody's agreed that it's a finely balanced application and that actually, you know, the con the, the opinion of um, the committee is that it's just not finely balanced enough and that, you know, the concept plan and the protection of Ridge and Furrow just slightly outweighs that. I don't think in any way it could be argued we're acting unreasonably. Um, uh, it, it is a real concern cross party and um, even the officers admit it's very finely balanced. So are we still likely to be on the hook for substantial costs when we've acted reasonably? Who knows, it'll be down to an inspector, wouldn't it, if they go to appeal, that is. Right, um, there's no other member indicating. So the it's been moved and seconded that we refuse the application on the grounds that have just been uh, uh, put on by um, Darren, uh, which is, ju just repeat it again, so we're absolutely um, sure Thanks, of it. Chair. Darren. So, I'm not sure how we want to do it, but I've got refusal on the grounds of conflict with the concept plan and yeah. loss of informal open space, which is obviously showing the concept plan. And then we've got the bit about Ridge and Furrow. So, the, um, the loss of bridge and furrow, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't know whether that would be a separate reason as such, or whether that would, because the concept plan designates it as informal open space because of the bridge and furrow, but it doesn't protect the bridge and furrow and give it any sort of statutory protection. Okay. So well, uh, I'm kind of, I'm happy for, yeah. I'm happy to accept that wording as it is. Okay. But just, I am, I am just going to check with councillors Grant and Smith if they are. Okay. Uh, does uh, that does that yes, chair. yes actually, chair I'm, I'm happy with that yeah and that case, satisfies me as well okay thank you in which case wendy can you um uh sorry go through the list for the votes to refuse the application yes sir councillor graham uh in favor councillor hancocks against councillor lloyd Four. Councillor Pander. Four. Councillor Rudkin. Four. Councillor Sargent. Four. Councillor Shepherd. Four. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Tandy. Councillor Tandy. Four. Councillor Tromans. Four. Councillor Watkins. Against. And Councillor Wilson. Four. 
Okay, thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Chair. Could you just let, yeah, let me know? I make so, that one. 10 4 2 against, Chair. Okay, the applications refused. If we could move on to item number four, then, please. Milverton House. That's the one. Thanks, Chair. <clears throat> so this is item number four, Milverton House School, Holman Way, and Eaton. This application is a request to do tree works to two trees, T8 and T9 of Tree Preservation Order 280. They're sited on Milverton House School, Holman Way. The trees are both sycamores and are located in the north of the site. Um, on this site plan, you can see, hopefully see here, um, I've put the blue arrows on so there can be no doubt over which trees that, that we're referring to. Um, both trees are visible within the street scene of Holman Way, the nearby Park Street and even from Attleborough Road. Um, the principal consideration on this type of application is the impact on the visual amenity of the area and the health condition of the tree. The agent has provided detail of disease and decay in the trees. There we go. Um, the trees are showing signs of sooty bark disease. According to the agent, and while the MBBC tree office stated he found no soot, there is clear and significant physiological damage to the bark of the tree, which is detrimental. MBBC tree officer was consulted and he requested some additional details. And following this additional detail, our tree officer agreed and has no objection to the felling of the trees based on their condition. It is therefore recommended that although the application, um, although the loss of the trees will have some detriment to visual immunity, the application to fell these two trees will, should be approved as detailed on the agenda. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Uh, Mr Chalkley. Hello, Chair. Can you hear me? Uh, I can, thank you. Yes, it, the timer will start once you do. OK, brilliant. So, uh, yeah, upon um, visual assessment of these trees before works were carried out, it was clear that the um, trees had crowned dieback. And um, originally, we just went in to do a bit of dead wooding in the canopy. Um, upon that, we started to notice uh, flaking bark and the odd union, which was um, showing signs of weakness. See, when you have dieback in the upper crown, which is present in these sycamores, um, it shows signs of some weakness in the tree. Um, so following on from that, uh, the flaking bark is, and the, and the crown dieback is a sign of sooty bark disease. Even though there's no soot on the tree present, the soot can come later on in the infection. I've worked on trees before where um, the bark starts flaking and the crown dies back, and it has been quite a while before the soot um, becomes present. The reason, I mean, we are always against... Um, taking down veteran trees but the reason we we are saying that these two need to come down is because mainly because of safety safety reasons sooty bark disease um th there's no actual um treatment for it um it's brought on by um quite hot weather and we had a fairly hot spring last year um following on from this it's um it, it's it's kind of key that we we deal with this before the soot becomes present because if it does then become present it's highly likely it would spread to the nearby trees and there is a larger veteran sycamore around the corner which doesn't have any signs of sooty bark disease and I'd kind of like to keep it that way because it's um, that that holds a lot of immunity value these two trees I understand hold quite a lot of immunity value and it is a shame that they're in this condition but as it's um, stated in the future, we we are looking to put to replace these two trees with some other species um, and hopefully ones that are a little bit more established so we can fill a smaller gap of that area. Um, realistically, 
the, the signs that we've got here are early start signs of um, sooty bark disease. If we leave it any later, it can become a, even more so of a problem. You can get crown dieback even more severely. So you've got dropping branches. If there's going to be kids around this area and it's over a highly used foot, public footpath, we don't want any failure happening around this area. If they're in a park or something like that, I'd say, yeah, you could possibly leave them to, to continue to and see what their state would be. But as there's no treatment to it, I think it's best we, we start looking to have some works done to these trees. So. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chalkley. Thank no you. problem. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? From no. My no, no, it's, only, it's to members, to what you've said. Okay, thank um, you. I don't see any. I just wanted to to ask you, uh, you did make a point uh, about, uh, you know, you accept the, the, the value, both um, environmentally and uh, amenity value of the trees, and you said that you would replace them. Um, again, would you be happy if that was a, a condition from this committee that you do that i would hope it would be and i would propose that to the the owners of milverton that we'd be looking to try and replace replace those trees i'd be quite yeah i'd be quite sad if they didn't and i've already got some trees in mind which i'll propose to them for replanting okay thank you very much no problem thank you chair councillor tandy is it a point of clarification Sorry, I just wanted to speak to it. That was all. Right. There's no other points of clarification. So, Councillor Tandy. Yeah, thank you, Chair. <laughs> Gentlemen beat me to it because, and yourself, I would like to see the trees replaced, accepting that it will take them a while to fill the gap. But I would like, as you suggested, a condition put on that the trees are replaced to the best of their ability, Chair, please. Okay, thank you. Um, Darren, could, uh, could I ask, I mean, I may have missed it, but I haven't seen it within the conditions. So would it be okay uh, for us to condition that for a, for tree replacements for the, yeah, if these that, two are lost? That would be fine. Chair, we could um, add that condition on if members were minded to vote for that. That's that's fine. Okay. Um, um, if any member's not happy with that condition being added, can they put their hand up? Okay, ta ta thanks, Councillor. <laughs> so so I'm aware you were indicating. So, um, uh, four members of the committee, we're, if you if you can, we're considering this this application now with the condition added that there'd be tree replacements for the ones being removed if it's agreed to do that. Councillor Sergeant. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with cutting it, cutting, uh, cutting them down, and also um, replacing them with, um, you know, a suitable uh, uh, replacement. I don't think you asked for a seconder, did you? I'm quite happy to second it, but um, oh, if I didn't, I apologise. Yeah, I'm quite happy to second it. <laughs> okay then. Okay. Um, yeah, um, yeah, good, good job to um, get them down because obviously you don't want to um, trouble any other trees around. So yeah, I'm, I'll be for this application okay thank you okay so just to be clear it's been moved and seconded <coughs> to grant consent to the tree works for the reasons printed with the addition of a condition that those trees be replaced with a suitable alternative darren anything else you wanted to come back on no happy with that chair that sounds good thank you uh in which case I haven't heard any dissent, so I'm just going to ask if anybody's not in agreement with that proposal to uh, put your hand up. OK, I don't see any. So, Wendy, are you happy that that's unanimous? Yes, Chair. OK, I believe that concludes all the applications. We don't have any other items of any other business except for me. Uh, to say a thank you to Darren for stepping in at the last minute to present the reports and perhaps wish his colleague uh, a swift recovery. Okay. Thank you for attending Thanks, the meeting. Chair.
and declare the meeting closed. And Victoria, if you could stop the live streaming for us, please.